Okay, part two of the stream is where we do our takeoff. <laughs> it's perfect timing. Okay, 354 on the heading. Let's go and stop here. Now, let me give everyone a disclaimer, okay? I've tried it a couple of times, this one. I almost never got it right. It's a very weird behavior on the takeoff. It kind of wants to veer to the left, even with full right rudder trim. And then when the tail lifts up, it then kind of blows to the right so much. So I can't quite get the behavior yet. It's very weird. So what I mean is, so this plane, it's a tail dragger. So the normal tendency of a tail dragger is, is as it picks up speed, it kind of, the tail, the back kind of lifts off. So that instead of like facing that way, it kind of becomes horizontal like that. At that point when that tail lifts off, that tail wheel lifts off, it starts wanting to bank to the right. So it's, it's a bit confusing. But before that, it tends to want to uh, yaw to the left rather. So it's very strange. The pedals, they give you a workout. Yes, exactly, right? Yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. All right, so let, let's see. Uh, let's lock the tail wheel. There we go. Rudder, test. Yes, you can even look outside and see. Yes, the rudders are moving. All right, and we move to high idle because we are about to take off. There we go, and you can even hear the change. All right, one second. Do they have brakes set or anything? Okay, so we're now on high idle, and now we're going to take off. Now, this being a turboprop, we don't want to just floor it, you know? Takeoff thrust is somewhere above middle, but we have to make sure that the torque doesn't go beyond. So here we go. You can see, it's trying to veer to the left. So I put in right rudder. Alright, there we go. Looking good. And then as we as the tail lifts off, look at that very different behavior look very very fidgety so i don't quite get it yet uh, very weird to me but once it gets on the air then it becomes a lot more stable so to me it just it's like it doesn't want to stay it doesn't want to stay on the ground it really wants to fly let's put it that way but yeah it, i think it takes some getting used to right once we're airborne, positive rate, there is no gear to move up. But let's stop the brakes anyway. And uh, as we get some altitude in here, we can start um, retracting the flaps. Hey, front end. How are you doing? Thanks for joining. Looking good. Let's go ahead and turn towards the the direction we have to be heading to. And yes, there is uh, there is also adverse yaw. So if you look at the PFD, if you look at this triangle right here, as I bank to the left, you can see the slip indicator right there, the bottom uh, horizontal bar. It's going off, right? So you have to apply the proper rudder pedals, the proper yaw to counteract that um, that slip. Okay. Let's get some altitude in here properly. 77 knots, didn't they say? So let's start climbing. I would think about that as well, Dyson, um, but everyone keeps saying put it full right rudder. But that might actually be a good experiment, yes. Uh, maybe the sim isn't very um, isn't properly modeled yet for tail draggers. I heard it's much better since sim update six, but maybe it's still a bit uh, work in progress. Huh? How are you doing, Dyson? Welcome back, guys. Yeah, very interesting how that tail dragger behavior works on the ground that autumn vibes 
Oh yeah. One thing I really like about this view. Oh, and by the way, let's turn off the aux fuel pump and the landing lights. You can also start retracting it. So let's check. Yes, everything looks good. Yeah, no, nothing going on the red. Flaps are up. Aux fuel pump is off. All temperature is normal. Uh, landing lights off. Heating controls don't really need it. And ITT below 695. Yes, good. Very simple checklist for a climb. Let's maybe climb to around 3,000 feet. Or actually, this one is okay, right? 2,200, I think, is good. Stay here. Let me just trim it. One thing I really like about this is you can actually look outside and look below, and you can see your one of your tires there. I don't know. I just like the the view of it. Like that that view looks so good to me. Maybe it's because it's it's a very common view in many real life um, YouTube videos of pilots as they fly. Maybe. So it really rings a bell in my books. Cool. All right, let's make our way towards the uh, the airport here. We can also try climbing later and try that um, that very famous beta descent or however they call it. Also, it seems like I'm still climbing. Fine, let's climb to 2,500 maybe. And then I will pull back on the throttle because right now uh, no actually we're good rpm is stuck at 2000 that's good because there's an, an rpm governor so it will keep it at 2000 regardless of your power setting except when you are uh, in in close to flight idle where it go it will go into beta or something like that okay looks good so sand flight here you have rudder trim set to right, and once the tail lifts off, it's going to want to go to the right. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So, I wonder why they recommend it. Because it's... Um, hmm. Yeah, it's a good experiment. Let's try it. Let's try it to, to put it in the center later. Actually, I don't even see... What's interesting is I, I was expecting in the checklist to see that... After you're in the air, you would set rudder trim to the left because you wouldn't need that much right rudder anymore. But it doesn't look like it because if you look at the the slip indicator here, we are flying coordinated. Right? I would expect that we would have too much right rudder here. So it, it seems like it's still correct, which is I find very, very interesting. Direction, Seged. That way, yes. <laughs> Just get your PPL already. <laughs> that would be great, Mark. That would be great. How are you doing, Rexer? Thanks for joining. How are you guys? All right, now that we're on the air, I can uh, spend some more time with you guys uh, chatting and getting up to speed. Sorry, I think I missed a few messages. <clears throat> All right. Let me see if I can catch up. So yes, still a mystery to me how to really make this thing work. If if it's rough during takeoff, that left and right tendency, it's even rougher during uh, landing for me. It's very weird. I, I really don't get it. So yes, I might try out Dyson's uh, um, uh, advice and, and uh, tip if we maybe let's have a look. Let's see how it will behave if we have rudder trim all the way to the center. So actually, let's do that now. Let's see how it will behave if we put that to the center. Okay. Rudder trim is now at the center. It does seem like, yeah, we have a bit of slip in there, right? It's not really at the center. But it's not that bad, actually. Not as bad as I was imagining. So it looks like we do need a bit of right rudder, rudder trim, but it's minimal. Like, 
Maybe that one? That one. Did someone sub? Someone did. Hey, adventure. Takes for two months, man. Appreciate it. Glad you're in the stream. GG. Indeed. I would guess Brontin is, huh? <laughs> well, we, we, we did go there in the recent ETS2 uh, Season 2 series. Maybe that's what Frontin is referring to. We're continuing to climb here. One second. Let's get back to 2,500. And let's have a look outside. Oh yeah, one thing I would want to see is if we turn on the autopilot. So this one has the G1000, but interestingly enough, the autopilot is a different module here. The KAP140, Bendix King KAP140. So we turn on the autopilot and navigate it through this point, not in the usual G1000 autopilot that we are more familiar with. So if we turn on autopilot here, I think one a sec. Let me set the selected altitude 2500 there right and then i turn on autopilot right here and then i say follow the heading there you go and then i say follow nav maybe okay it's in nav mode now so you can see it's banking on its own it's going to follow that magenta line so that the cdi this course deviation will be right at the center so it does have autopilot so hand flying is great but when you want to take some photos you want to go outside then it's perfect because then we can just uh, leave it to the hands of the autopilot and then go outside like this take some photos look at how cool that is Autumn vibes. I'm a few weeks late, I think. Probably doesn't look like this anymore, but I will still take it. I will still take it. Is that working? One second. You guys are from Hungary. Oh, nice. Look at you guys finding each other here. That's a peak of the uh, the Appalachians. Man, that's a very scenic sight, isn't it? Sunrise, silhouette. Um, wrong thing. Oh, look at that. My GPU is actually maxing out here. Interesting, we're only at 45 FPS. But it's pretty smooth, so I have no complaints. It's not stuttery. There we go. Also, let you guys know if it's um, if it's too loud for you. Let me know so we can adjust it. So have a look at Sky Park. Ooh, there should be something here. Mount Oglethorpe. Hmm. Should be in our 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Maybe it's that one. Also, I, I, there is a very nice effect here in the, in the interior. If you look here. Through that part. It kind of feels like it's a bit blurred. Get what I mean? Like that part right there. There's kind of like a cinematic depth of view, depth of field, kind of thing, over there on that side. I really like it. Makes it look very cinematic looking. It's very cool. Oh, and since we're on cruise here now, I can go ahead and show you. So let's turn on the EFB. So the fuel, right? You can see the fuel is in real time uh, being consumed. But if we want to switch to the external tanks, we can turn on the pumps here. Um, one second, why did that work? 
Oh, that worked already. There you go. There it is. So now the external tanks are being consumed. But I don't know of any other place where that can be seen. So I'm not so sure. Yeah. And here we have indications. Left and right fuel pump. Mode. Sounds like a Hoover machine. <laughs> Yeah. If you guys can speak in English, I would be able to uh, participate as well. But if it's fine, if it's fine, if you guys want to keep it private, <laughs> I can imagine the joy at uh, finding a fellow Hungarian in a in an Asian stream. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, let's have a look. Uh, Mount Oglethorpe should be on our right. Guys, think that's that one? Hmm. Let's see. I think it's that one. It's not that near. Mount Oglethorpe. Maybe this is a perfect time for bush talk radio, huh? One second, let's see. Let's see if I can log in. Um, what are my credentials here? Not sure. Oh crap. Did it just go to slow mode for me? I think so. Dang it. I hope we can return it back. Maybe it just paused it. There we go. Okay, good. Good. Continue. Thank you. Palachan Mountain Range is one of the oldest mountain ranges on Earth. <laughs> That's actually great. Yes, I am actually looking for trivia. So thanks for saying that, Alex. I do want more context here. Let's go and look at it, Bush Talk Radio. Maybe we can get some info. And maybe from there we can go and uh, research more about what this place is all about. Okay, so where are we? I find ourselves here found four targets nearby. That's interesting. That's new. The autopilot seems to be working well. And let me show you what I'm looking at. This looks very different now. Lots of different things here. Video near me. Flight sim mode near me. That is pretty cool. Okay. So where are we right now? Over here. Okay, and we have, let's see, Sequoia Lake, interesting, we have some airports, we have Blood Mountain, highest peak on the Georgia section of the Appalachian Trail, sixth tallest mountain in Georgia, interesting. Thanks, LL. No worries. Have a good night. Thanks for uh, staying. Good. Catch you next time, man. Uh, let me see. You can scan the area. Oh, okay. Needs a recharge, it says. High Valley Air Park. That's where we're going. So we can actually see to the right there later on as we land this uh, blood mountain was it blood mountain should be close by it's actually interesting because the the points of interest in in sky park is a bit different from the points of interest in um, 
in Bush Talk Radio. Man, look at this view and all our cargo in there. Very nice, isn't it? Very, very nice. I like. Interesting enough, how would you know? Like in real life, you don't know if your tanks are almost gone. Because you would have no indication here, would you? One more thing, this one, the lean system, that's not really accurate. The descriptions at least. These are more for piston engine planes, not for turboprops, but I think it's a limitation at the moment. G1000 NXI only has this, has these labels. And you cannot change. So this cylinder select, this assist, that's for leaning the engine. It's not, it doesn't really apply for turbo props. So we have fuel flow. We have uh, quantity left, quantity right. But I think those are the main tanks. Yeah, that's not really the external tanks. So I think the only way for now is to look at the EFB. Right, right. That's a that's a good point. Let's wait for the uh, Asobo PC6, and uh, so we can have an apples to apples comparison. But for me, I'm I happily dug in already. But yes, the, if you haven't bought it yet, that's a good um, that's a good uh, decision. The Kodiak will be released as well. Yes, that's one more amazing bush plane, isn't it? We're getting pretty low here. Um, one second, let's go ahead and turn off autopilot. Let's climb a bit. It might be a bit safer. Yeah. Apples to Aardvark comparison. I still don't know what Aardvark is, although it sounds very familiar. <laughs> what is it? And these mountains. Hey Raf, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Hope you are enjoying the chill vibes and uh, feel free to say hi and uh, join us in chat. Ah, we're you doing celebones. Glad you could join today. Our things. Let's see if you can climb this enough. We do need to climb steeper here. I should be able to, to do that. Stall speed for this one is around 60 knots, I think, when it's clean and there are no flaps. So as long as you stay above that, it should be good. Looks like I also need a bit of right rudder here. Probably because of all that power. There we go. We cleared that. No problem. Let's continue climbing. Let me trim up. Uh, no, just a single PC. Um, the dual PCs are too complicated for my brain. <laughs> I would have a hard time. Um, and I don't have enough space for it. And I don't have enough money for it. <laughs> But yes, I heard that Fabio recently moved to a du dual stream PC, right? I saw that he was back yesterday. He had some troubleshooting issues in the beginning, but I think he managed it. How's it so far? I can't wait to get back into his streams. Okay, there, that looks like it. 4,000 feet looks like it's a nice altitude to stay at. Let's go and stay there. Looking good. Share my settings. For which one? OBS or the in the sim? RTX 3070. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit complex because you would really have to play with it. But I would recommend... How did I do? For OBS... If you Google the keywords um, OBS HD settings, I think like that, there is a there is a forum thread in the OBS site which recommends some of the parameters. That would be the good starting point. 
and then make sure you use NVENC in the video encoding instead of X264 because NVENC would utilize your 3070 that will uh, save you a lot of CPU and I think the guide the, the guide in the thread would, uh, would have those details as well for the sim it's basically ultra settings the ultra preset and then just either, I think I just tweak the glass cockpit to high what kind of stutters are you getting? Is it in the sim? Is it in OBS only? And then you can check also if you're dropping frames in OBS. Is there you can you can display stats in OBS, so you'll have an idea if you're dropping some frames. Sim is fine. It's only on OBS. Okay, right. Yeah. Try also updating your graphics drivers. I've had that issue before that when the sim is to like the sim, sim can hog your um, resources so much so that OBS has nothing left that happened to me before um, make sure you run OBS in admin mode administrator mode because that will allow OBS to save a portion of the GPU power for itself so it doesn't stutter as bad so that's the number one advice I could give. Run it in admin mode. Yes. Because that, that kind of logic only works in admin mode. Okay, we're pretty close to the airport, guys. Uh, let's slow down here. I think it's that one. Let's maybe circle around and see where this takes us. Okay, I see there should be a runway to our left. Can't quite see it. It should be there. Let's circle around here. I am also getting a bit of lag here. How is it looking on your end? I think it's okay. It's a grass runway. So let's slow down. Let's maybe do a couple of circles around this airport so we can see where it is. It should be just beyond this lake. So there should be a strip. Maybe it's that one. I think it's that one. You see that clearing? Yeah, that's the one, guys. That is the one. Now, how is the wind looking like here? The winds are actually coming from the, our back. Five knots. So if we keep up with that, we should actually be approaching from the other side so this is perfect okay so what we can do is actually turn off the pumps here so we can use our own fuel again not the external tanks and let's go and prepare for landing altimeter uh what is the altimeter here that's a good question i have no idea let's just press the b key maybe yeah. fuel quantity is okay ox fuel pump switch is on yeah, ignition, we also turn that on. I guess that's in case um, the engine fails, so it would try and start up as much as possible. We are in high idle. Flaps, we will also trim. Uh, flaps, we will deploy in a bit. Okay, looking good. Trim as required, heating, landing lights on, tailwheel is still locked. Yes, good, okay. that enough space I'm not so sure but we'll try let's go ahead and turn around here yeah the admin mode is the the best I can give you the admin mode tip because I've had that problem lots of times when you're maxing out your GPU normally the priority is the game so nothing is left for OBS but if you oh it's too high maybe we can rush it not the most stable approach let's go flaps full we're in beta mode here now you can hear the propeller changing just to increase that um, 
deceleration, that descent, that's getting too fast. Look at how the propeller looks, guys. It is beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful propeller animation. It's too fast. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. 65 knots should be the ideal approach speed here. Okay, there it is. Then go full. Look how fast this stops. Reverse. I landed like half of the strip already and we still had more than enough to stop fully. Not bad at all. Yeah, I should have more than enough capability for it. One thing you could try, adventurer, is uh, try to record a local video first before you even stream. Try to record a local video so at least you can isolate if it's a problem with your connection, internet connection, or if it's really a problem with the recording. As so, so we could go one step at a time. Look at this thing, there's even a house here. Pretty cool. Okay, okay. Get behind that. Stall for the win, indeed, indeed. I didn't even do it properly, but I'll take it still works there's also a sound if you hear when you're taxiing on the grass there's also a specific sound for it I do love the the sounds that it adds let's go for tap flaps take off here Flaps take off, that's this guy. Oh, going reverse. The reverser is so powerful, I just wanted to slow down. Good luck, man. Okay, so let's maybe stop here for a bit because we need to plan for the next leg. How high are we? 2,840 feet above mean sea level. It's not too high yet. That looks good. Okay, parking brake is set. Let's go and see. Um, so let's go for takeoff. Before takeoff, right? Let's reset this. So that we can check out. Oh yeah, I wanted to try that out. Let's try the, the recommendation from Dyson. Let's put the rudder trim all the way to the left. Well, in the center, that is. I highly doubt this will work, but because this is the wrong procedure. Wrong. This is not realistic procedure, but maybe it's a good workaround for the sim. Sorry. Okay, that way, right? Should be okay. But everything else, stab trim, aileron trim, rudder trim is good. Flaps are set to, for takeoff. Yes, altimeter setting, fuel quantity, ox fuel pump, yes. Uh, ignition we can turn off. Anti ice, no need, prop the ice, engine instruments, um, all good. Eating control tail wheel, we'll lock that later as we line up. But first, let's go and plug it in. Have a good one, adventure. Good luck. Hope you fix your problems with the stream. Fly that plane inverted. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's more the hawk's uh, territory, I think. Alright, let's go for the next one. So we're starting off from here. Can I just go direct maybe? Let's go direct. Uh, golf. 
Echo Niner Niner. Heaven's Landing. That's the one. Enter, enter. There we go. Okay, that looks good. So that's just so we have a guide of where we should be going. Let's go ahead and line up. If we can find that grass strip again. Where the heck is it? Is it this one? Oh yeah, this is the start of it, right? I think. Right where this tree is. Okay, so something like this. Oh crap! Okay, there you go. Looking good. <laughs> Where's the runway? Runway is anywhere. Okay. Not the middle. Well, you would do the checklist whenever you would take off, right? But yes, having lunch first sounds like a great idea. Right, let's lock the tail wheel there. Okay, it's good. We are in high idle. Alright, looking good. Alright, we'll see if we'll now check if the center rudder trim works. I have my doubts, so we might have to reload this, guys, okay? Just warning you. Okay, that looks good so far. That looks good so far. Hey, that is looking pretty nice. One second. Okay. There it is. Uh, uh, even without the trim, it actually still. Oh, yo, 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 I thought this was a stall thing. We might have been too heavy for that. Dang it. Maybe I should have done some calculations first, huh? <laughs> Yikes. Okay, let's go to the main menu. <clears throat> School bus for six years. Ah, yeah, that makes full sense with a school bus, yes. But if you're flying, you would want to go through the checklist before takeoff, right? Each time before you do the takeoff. <clears throat> Golf Alpha 87. Let's start here again. Let's see how that works. And I think what we can do actually is we can. Second. Maybe the other way is easier. I don't know. Over here. Because we took off on this side, runway 21, we got met with the trees here. Maybe we should do this way instead. So that we have a bit more open space in front. Depends on the winds, but I think that can do, that can work. No! <laughs> Let's resume this trip. Not sure, that might have been because of the weight. Oh, and we forgot to uh, to unload some of the cargo. So we should be uh, unloading bit by bit, right? We started off 1,600 pounds. Let's maybe drop off, I don't know, uh, 400 pounds. So we, we drop off some of the supplies here in uh, High Valley Air Park. The plane accelerates slower in grass. I would imagine maybe that's the one of the explanations, huh? I'm not so sure. Okay, here we go. We're actually starting it off with the plane already ready for takeoff. Um, one second. Some something seems to be different. There we go. The cargo you want to change. So oh, we started off at 1600, right? Let's go tone it down to 1200. There we go. Right? So it's a bit lighter now. We unloaded some of the stuff. We can even simulate that like this. Unload some of the cargo. Yeah, I love that sound. 
Very cool. The fuel. Let's refuel. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. So right now the trims are already set for us. I don't think I want to do that center rudder trim now. I think I want to follow the correct procedure and I just want, need to know how to properly um, work on the rudder because it's a bit tricky. <laughs> Bigger tires for grass, that's true. Hey, what the? How are you doing, 86? But I think this should be okay. Yeah, bigger tires would be ideal, but this shouldn't be bad. At least that's the idea. We will see. At least the parking brake. Okay, we have the lights on. Ox fuel pump is not on though, is it? There we go. No, ox fuel pump is on. Okay, good. Right, let's see. Second time's a charm. We have flap set, everything. Applying a bit of right rudder. Keep center line. Okay, we are accelerating. Oh, that, that thing again. Ay, 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 That going to be enough? Barely enough. Barely enough. My goodness. Does it look like too much stall to me? But maybe I didn't push the throttle so much. Maybe I should have pushed it more. Um, but now I realize we don't have the thing programmed in. So let's do that manually. Laps are up. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights. And the ox fuel pump as well. Phew, at least we made it in one piece this time. Okay, this is the overall direction that we want to go. Once we have it a bit more level, I will plug in the uh, airport. <laughs> I know, right? Same here same here not sure um, I'm probably doing something wrong why uh, it's taking a bit longer takeoff roll maybe I should be going to uh, take off thrust take off power first before letting go of the brakes that would save me a bit of um, runway but I think on grass runways I don't think that's ideal at least when it's raining, it's not ideal. I would imagine the same thing for when it's grass. Because you might, because of the, from brake to sudden power, you might blow off some rocks, some debris. So I think a, a gradual um, acceleration would be ideal, but maybe it's also because of our weight. We, ha we do have max takeoff weight here. And that airport only had, let's have a look at how how, sh how how small that airport was oh yeah it had less than 2,000 feet runway length maybe that was the main problem <laughs> good look at that view very nice This is just wholesome supplies for the hikers. Okay. Stay at 5,000 feet here. Maybe we can try out the autopilot. 5,000 feet. Let's see if it will change. Heading mode. In this being the G1000 NXI, I'm very confident with its uh, capabilities. So it's VSR way up, maybe 300 feet per minute. Uh, 
all the way to 5,000 feet. There we go, VS3. 500 feet per minute, let's try that. That is updating on that side. Okay, looking good. And that should stop at 5,000. Nice. And while that's working, let's go and plug in the airport here. What was it again? Golf Echo 86 or something? Um, Golf Echo 9 or 9 or. Golf Echo 9 or 9 or, okay. That's the one. There you go. So now we can go nav mode there. And the plane will follow it accordingly. Do we have do we not have a flight director? We don't, do we? Yeah, I just noticed that. No flight director here. Interesting. Use diapers. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we definitely need the diapers for ourselves, I think. I don't think we can afford to leave that on the <laughs> on the on the airports. That is something we use for our own takeoffs and landings. Let's just sync that. Looks good. There we go. Now we can pull back a little. Let's have a look at the instrumentations here. Torque is good. ITT is good. 2000 RPM. NG is at 89%. Looks good. Not bad at all. Now I think the map, what we can do is like a, there we go, a relative um, relative height. Just so we have an idea if we are going to be hitting something based on our current altitude. A bit better visibility. Blood Mountain. Oh yeah, where is Blood Mountain now? It should be right in front of us, I think. Probably one of these. Kind <laughs> of bit funny. So how many miles away is that? 19 miles. That's actually very short. We'll get there in no time. 8 minutes estimated time and route here. Cool. It's not the fastest plane, is it? But it's not bad. 118 knots, more or less. Uh, what's our ground speed here? Ground speed. We do have 9 knots tailwind. 10 knots actually, directly at our backs. So ground speed is 136 knots. That's not bad at all, actually. Cool. I'll take it. And in the meantime, let's go for some sightseeing outside. Or actually, maybe we can spend some time finding nice angles in here. I'm not sure actually. Let's have a look at the cameras here. Maybe there is something we haven't explored yet. So pilot, we have the close pilot. Okay, that one is pretty standard, right? Landing, co-pilot. Instrument, we have a lot of other things, right? We saw that a while ago already. Quick view. What is quick view? Oh, that one. Okay. So you have a wing view. You have a cargo view. Oh, this is the one I'm looking for. You have the right wing view. You have a hood view or whatever you call it. This one too. Okay, and then not, nothing else. Also, this is one of the very iconic things in... Uh, in this plane, in the PC-6, this like very sharp nose like that. I, I don't know of many planes that have that much of a... I think it's one of the unique characteristics, this plane. Is, but also this one, right? This like... I don't know how you call it. Like there is like a, a table built in. <laughs> very nice. What is this saying? Ah... Flying to, predicted in actual icing conditions is not approved. No acrobatic maneuvers. Max airspeed, uh, 95 knots, flaps down. Okay. Fuel transfer. 
from external tanks in level flight only with main tank contents not below a half are we doing it wrong then? speaking of, we actually probably need that already starting the pump that should start consuming from our extra tanks let's double check So this should be counting down instead. Yeah, I think that works. Why is it that the main tanks are still getting consumed though? Maybe it's not fully the external tanks that are working. Maybe it depends on the pressure. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's still being consumed a bit. Maybe it's not a one or zero thing. Maybe it's just supplementary. Okay, let's have a look outside. Ah, uh, there she goes. There are so many things happening on this plane, I have no idea what those are. Like there's this like boomerang thing here. There's all these antennas, right? Antennae. It is very detailed though, and even the, on the paint job, you have the delivery itself as a bit of wear and tear. So it's not pristine condition. Very nice. You can see the crates from this view. And I think you can have the pilot and co-pilot shown on the external view. I just turned them off. How do you fly this thing? Yeah. Beacons below. November 315 Foxtrot. Very nice. Ooh, look at that. We have some lakes in front of us. Nice. Also to the left should be, what do you call it? Dix Creek Gap. Doesn't sound very uh, safe to say. <laughs> Let's have a look at the left. Where? Maybe that one, that opening? Maybe. Jettison the tanks. There is a way to turn off the tanks. I don't think you normally jettison it, but you can. If you go through here and untick the external tanks, then it will make those disappear and change the weights accordingly. But I don't want to do that. What we can do a while ago, I showed the, uh, the cargo. You can actually airdrop. If you only have a certain amount of cargo, you can airdrop it. So there is this trap door here which opens the cargo door at the back and if you have that kind of cargo it would just drop off. It's quite nice. Quite nice immersion. This is my favorite angle. This one. One second. Uh, probably something like this. Yeah. Where you can see the tire below. You can even see the scratches on the glass here. Nice wear in there. Very nice job in Melvis. Yeah, pretty cool. Yes, you can open the cargo door as well um, because this is used for skydiving. Oh my goodness, look at that view. Let's take a photo of that. Love seeing those lakes. Okay, so um, we can do that. We can try. I disabled the... You have to disable the engine stress failure i think or plane stress failure in the assistance settings let's hope this works there we go and i think even if it's if it's true what i read when you do that beta descent you know that descent where it can beat the skydivers 
with how fast this plane can descend I, what I read is this door actually would close on its own because of that speed of descent the door would close on its own and it's simulated here as well maybe we can try that later we can go and climb and then we can do a better descent now jump out <laughs> you first <laughs> okay we're almost there uh, we should actually see it right in front of us it's going to turn off the autopilot in here There's the runway direction, right? That's the one. So we should see it. And this is concrete, supposedly. So we should be able to join like the right downwind in here. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's clear as day, my goodness. Shouldn't be a problem spotting it at least. Okay, let's turn off the tanks here. Turn off the external tanks. Let's use our main tanks again. That's the one. Look at the visibility on this plane, right? Beautiful. Okay, let's let's uh, crossing midfield so we get the weather. So approaching from that other side would be the ideal. So let's join the left downwind here. Pull back on the throttle. Hey, <laughs> come back. <laughs> yeah, I wish a camera setting would be like that. I think some people requested it adding a camera for them from a skydiver's point of view let's hope that they implement it that would be great you can do that later in drone mode but it's not very realistic but uh, we'll, we'll try that later i'll show you that's a good idea actually okay all right let's slow it down get some space in here and pulling up so we purposely slow down the plane get into that white range so we can deploy our flaps there it is start extending our flaps bit by bit let's do a gums check gas undercarriage yes we do have our landing gear mixture uh, that's not really applicable is it uh, but we do have switches so that's the fuel pump it's the ignition and let's also turn on the landing lights there you go there you go okay let's make our turn should have enough time now and this is a very tricky thing with this plane because we, I cannot go to flight idle unless I want to go into beta and it will might be a bit too fast if I get into beta here is that the one is that the airport I think so Man, that looks pretty interesting wonder what that is interesting There we go. No, unfortunately, MSFS does not have a flyby view yet. You can do it manually, but it's not like X Plane, which has like a, you know, that that kind of thing. You have to position yourself manually. But we can do that later once we get on the next leg. That's a good idea, actually. So let's land it here. Let's start part three, and then we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Right flaps for landing that is set we have landing lights we have ox boost pump right now i think the speeds ideally would be around 65 knots so we are way too fast here and now i think i'm in entering the beta range here because so i'm seeing the rpm drop and i think it's okay because it's forcing me to slow down do have winds coming from the right Be tight ok 
Okay. Ooh. Too close to those trees. There we go. Let's clear them up. Land this thing. There we go. Reverser. Here we go again with the weird behavior. Yeah, I don't really don't get it. But here we are. There we are. Such a cool place for an airport, I know, right? Heaven's Landing. The name actually fits it very well. Let's go and unlock the wheel steering so we can go and turn into this one of these uh, houses. Drop off our cargo. Okay. Looks good. Stop here and unload this thing. Second. Greased. <laughs> Close enough, I'll take it. I'll take it. Still not very used to the landing from a tail dragger perspective. I think in some cases you want a three point landing where you all three points, so both the front and the tail wheel land at the same time. That's going to be ideal for I think grass runways in uneven surfaces but for hard surfaces I'm not sure I think landing in the front tires first is ideal so I might have to study that a bit <clears throat> okay but that looks good all right so let's go ahead let's keep this running maybe let's go to low idle for now I right, just keep it chill right there and what we can do is uh, we can open the doors here There we go. Let's go ahead and unload the cargo. Some more diapers. <laughs> Are we really carrying diapers to hiking trails? Uh, and let's drop off 400. So it's going to be what 800 left. There we go. So the boxes have gotten smaller. <laughs> I'll take it. I will take it. Good. right right the so yes in an ideal if you have a nice hard surface which is level like this one then ideally i think you land your front tires first but if you are landing on a grass runway something that is uneven maybe has some rocks or some uneven surfaces the ideal thing is to do a three-point landing from what i know because the risk is if you land only your front tires first and you come across like a, a rock or something then the plane is at risk of tipping over like that right if you land your front first if it, this is the front if you land like that then okay good but if you encounter some kind of obstacle in there it's very possible that you tip over like that so with those uneven surfaces the three-point landing even if it's i guess more pressure on the back is safer but if you have this one, which is, you're sure it's clean, if there is no obstacle in front, then landing in the front tires is ideal. I think that's what the, that's one of the factors that they consider. But to be honest, at, at this point for me, as a pure beginner in tail draggers, I just want to land it, period. <laughs> land it in one piece. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Next up is uh, 85 Tango November, Teleco Plains Municipal. Okay, let's see. 85 Tango November. There we go. Enter, enter. Looking good. All right. <clears throat> oh, it's not bad. I mean, these kinds of tires, they can handle some roughness. I mean, not extreme rocks right but you don't need like the super big ones um just for everything i mean it's not that rough it's still a grass it's still a an airstrip right it's just grass it's not like you're landing on rocks or uh, 
of totally uneven surfaces, but there can still be obstacles. Okay. Let's see. How far away is that? Um, doesn't really say yet. Maybe when we get on the air, it will say. Okay. The winds are coming from our back there, so let's back taxi. And let's be from there. Let's go and... release so one thing I'll have to do is switch back to high idle later yeah for those huge rocks you need bigger tires but for grass it should be okay exactly that's my philosophy to mark <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. But yes, it gives us a nice practice here, right? It's a good excuse to fly this plane. Explore the Appalachians as well. Oh, and yes, let's start part 3 once we get lined up on the runway there. Look at these hawks just chilling by in this airport. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Goodness. That's one amazing plane right there, the Hawk. I cannot unfortunately uh, do it justice. It requires some more um, better reflexes on the flying than I than I have. Right. The priority is saving lives, and the next is saving the plane, but not the other way around. Good, okay, laps for takeoff. Let's go through that takeoff checklist again. Before takeoff, actually. Yes, because we need to set the trims. That's actually a very good reminder. So let's go ahead and slow down here. <laughs> like, like that sound. Just to slow down. There was actually a taxiway going through here, but okay, that's fine. We can make it work. And there is a car right on this road. Alright, here we go. Let's end part two here of the YouTube footage.